What we're going to do here today, this is primarily an Indigo Press event, and this is an Indigo-centric view of the Prince OS experience. I'll point out in places how it goes across the graphics business, because as, as you know, Print OS is a cross-graphics initiative, but there are aspects of it which are very specific to each business because it's specific to classes of equipment. So we're going to address that during the, um, during, the, uh, during the presentation. Do you wonder why your printing equipment doesn't deliver the daily throughput you expected? Wouldn't you like to improve? Print OS can help. As order numbers grow, do you worry about cost per job? Wouldn't you like to process more orders for less? You can with PrintOS. Do you ever have trouble tracking a job on the floor? Wouldn't you like complete visibility and perfect on-time performance? PrintOS is your answer. Would you like to be able to collaborate and be part of a virtual global community of HP customers, helping you grow, profit, and succeed? Look to PrintOS. Would you like any time, anywhere, access to your data and dashboards? Get it with PrintOS. Would you like to have infinite storage and archive capacity, but never have to worry about server storage, power, and IT? Yes, with PrintOS. And would you like to help your employees become more productive, better at what they do, and happier? PrintOS can help. PrintOS can help. You can with PrintOS. Yes, with PrintOS. There's a lot of promises there. But the truth is, those are the reasons, those are the kinds of problems that we wanted to address when we set out on the journey for PrintOS. And that's a journey that we've been on for over three years. And what you're seeing and what we're going to be talking about is real. It exists. It's being used by customers. And it's going to be released at Drupal. This is not one of those one-day things. This is here, and we'll keep growing. So I'm going to start with something that I did talk about in Dusseldorf, but is really important. PrintOS is a print production operating system. OS, operating system, you guys understand that. What do I mean when I think of an operating system? Well, I think of an operating system runs applications, both you know, HP and third parties. Yes, PrintOS does that. An operating system manages the interaction between applications, hands jobs off from one app to another. Check, PrintOS does that. Um, you can extend an operating system by Developing through APIs. Check. PrintOS does that. You can extend the operating system by plugging devices in. And we can plug in our devices. We can plug in other devices. We'll deliver jobs to whatever's plugged in, be it HP or Xero or whoever. Check. So it's extendable. Um, an operating system manages user access, user privileges, and security. Check. PrintOS does that. Um, a, an operating system defines a user experience. Check, we do that in PrintOS as well. We create a great user experience for our customers. And finally, any modern operating system comes with a bunch of tools and um, applications that come out of the box with that operating system, and PrintOS does that as well. So my kind of starting point is, think of it as an operating system for business not for a computer, and it helps run the business, it helps the people, it helps the actions that are going on, and we'll talk more about that right now. Um, so, this again is a slide that I've used about, and we can talk about PrintOS is doing three key things. Get more from your HP Indigo and other HP graphics printing equipment, and we're talking here about more productivity, higher quality, fewer errors and problems. The second thing is to simplify and automate production. And here we think about how you can reduce costs and overheads, how you can increase throughput, and how you can ensure fewer errors in the process. And finally, when we talk about innovation, collaboration, and growth, we're thinking about actually how you drive growth as a business, taking advantage of the first two, and adding additional uh, features. And the ultimate measure of all this is can we help our customers to grow, to scale, 
and to produce as much as they want. For some customers, that may be moving from 10 jobs to 50 jobs a day. For others, it may be moving from 100 to 1,000, or 1,000 to 10,000. That's the kind of step function change that we want to help customers achieve, and we're going to talk today about how we do that. And I'm going to start here with this dashboard, the homepage dashboard of PrintOS, for a very simple reason. I've just kind of made things nice and simple, and I kind of said you've got a silo about equipment, and a silo about production, and then you've got this growth thing. But actually, PrintOS brings it all together. It doesn't work in silos. You go into the homepage, and what you see, you see what's happening on my Indigo presses, on my latex printers. You see what's happening in my production, my jobs. So you actually get a view that so often in printing businesses is siloed. And PrintOS is actually an integration platform to do that. And one of the things about platforms is that we don't know yet. You know, platforms evolve over time. And you don't always know at the beginning what kind of integration points are going to emerge and how it's going to drive new you know, innovative capabilities and so on. And that's going to be true of PrintOS as well. What is certainly true is that the six cards you see here will change and we're going to add more capabilities. This is, I, I said it's real and it's out there, but where we're at today is a starting point, not a finishing point, and it will continue to evolve. So having made that point about um, about the fact there'll be more integrations and more cards and this will evolve. Let's actually go back into the kind of the frame of the three pillars and talk through them. So the first pillar, as we said, is getting more out of your HP Indigo presses, the Indigo view, your HP graphics devices with a broader view. And the truth is that the reason that I'm going to focus there on Indigo is that these are Indigo-centric applications in most cases, except where I say otherwise. And they were developed starting quite a long time ago with a view of how we can help customers to be more successful. Because contrary to popular belief, we don't just want to sell more and more hardware to our customers. We actually want the customers to print more and more on their existing equipment, get more value from it, drive greater profitability and revenue, because that's actually the best way to drive their growth and ultimately to, send them, to sell them more presses. So it's not like we're just being kind, we have a, a strong interest here, but it's a common interest to drive that business success. And when we think about it, right now, I think about five apps that you see, whose names you see are on the slide that we're going to talk about, that are, uh, that are actually about helping you get more from the equipment. We're going to talk about PrintBeat, which is also going to be applicable to PageWide WordPress at Drupal. And you're going to see that some of the others, like Knowledge, zone can be applicable across the portfolio and so on. So that's the kind of the graphics view. This is the opportunity to say that there is a requirement. If customers want to get all the goodies we're about to talk about, it does have one simple must. They have to be running the latest versions of press software and DFE software because built into those versions are the capabilities to drive that. So we've already upgraded more than a thousand Indigo presses with the version that supports the cloud. And they're already anonymously communicating with the cloud. Of those, 140 or so are actually registered with PrintOS because the users have opened an account and are getting the benefits. But we've been working infrastructurally to enable that and to drive that. And Having more than a thousand is a great start, but there are thousands more to go, and there's a big effort out there to enable that. So I'm going to start with PrintBeat. Now, most of you, since you're not customers, won't know of PrintBeat, so let me give you a little bit of background. PrintBeat is currently an email report that has been sent over the last two years to an ever-growing number of customers. It started from a handful, and now it's going to thousands of customers, and each week they get an email that gives them a report on their weekly performance in the form of five KPIs. It gives it to them with all that's modern. It gives a score, it gives a smiley, it gives a trend. It gives them a very simple snapshot of how they're performing operationally. And the reason that we do this is that, as Alon said yesterday, there's this big sea of data 
And actually getting clarity is quite difficult if you're a business owner, if you're a production manager. And we're trying to make it simple. Some customers say it's too simplified, but for most customers, it's a radical reinvention of the way they look at what they're doing and opens dialogue within their businesses about their performance. All of a sudden, the conversation between the production manager and the press operator is very different because they've got a simple, clear, objective set of measures around which to have the conversation. And that's been lacking until now. I felt that, he felt that. How do you adjust those feelings? Now we've got numbers. Last week my score was X, this week my score is Y. What's happened? So that's what we've been doing with, with Printbeat over the last couple of years, driving a uh, a mindset of how customers can drive continuous operational improvement. That's great. So now we're saying, hey, it's all well and good to get a weekly report into your email, but life works in increments that are also shorter than a week. So what you can see on the screen here is in fact that we've got today the current day's performance up there. You can see how much you've printed on your presses. You can see what your presses are doing in near real time. You can see how many jobs are in the queue and how many sheets have been printed and so on. You get a view that is simple and clear. So that's, by bringing in the near real time element, all of a sudden you've got an, an aspect that print in the week, what is my performance on each of these three, on each of these five parameters, what's my score, Da da da, you know, uh, how am I doing? All is well and good. And because it's now a web based system or a cloud based system and not just a static email report, you can dig in so you can actually go and get more historical information. You can get a, a better view that helps you understand what's happening. You can choose what time scale to look at. You can narrow it down to limited parameters. You can take a view of your site. You can take a view of a single press. So we're giving accessibility to data that drives understanding, that drives operational improvement. And we even have, um, so, so if I give you an example, one of the parameters that we've been running with that is now actually being rolled into another one, but it's still a good story to tell, is jam rates. If I as a print business say, I've been fed up with getting bad scores on jam rates, because it means that I'm not performing well compared to others, you start an initiative, you start saying, okay, am I buying the right media? certified media? Am I storing the media right? Is the environment in my, um, in my press room right? Ha is, is my press well adjusted? Does my, has my engineer actually made sure that the paper path is flowing well? And over a number of weeks or months, you can actually see your score improving or not, but you get an opportunity to understand objectively. Maybe I got one kind of media that is causing all my jams and it's not a good media to use, or I'm, I'm whatever the reason is. So it helps you understand and drives it. The final piece that we're adding in Printbeat is this bit at the bottom, personal advisor. Personal advisor is literally what it says. It is a capability to, what we're doing, driving big data analysis, you know, as Alon said yesterday, Indigo Presses have been the, in, the Internet of Things long before, since long before the Internet of Things existed, and we can actually say, hey, Mr. Customer, on this press, in this week, you lost this much time because of this problem for which we think there is a solution that looks like that. We're not giving you kind of just conceptual stuff, it's really quantitative, specific, action-oriented, and that's part of a mindset that says we want to help you improve because your improvement drives your success and that's what we're committed to. And this is something that Alon also said yesterday. Now, it's not just on the web. PrintOS generally is going to have a, um, a native app, but right now the native app is for PrintBeat only. And I'm going to do something that people should never do, because it can always go wrong, but Steve Jobs did it, so who am I to say it can't be done? I'm actually going to show you the native app here on this screen on the right. So we're loading the, uh, we're, we're actually loading some presses from the testing center where you were visiting yesterday to see what's happening. And we can see that today they've printed already quite a lot. That's what we see at the top. I've got a number of presses, so if I just kind of swipe across, we can see those presses moving along. If I want to see the historical view, I can move upwards, and we're going to go back to that in a minute. 
And in fact, if I want to see if I've got any personal advice, I go there. Now note, no advices. Now ignore the fact that I probably would never have written no advices if I was the copywriter. The simple fact is that it's a great proof point that if we don't have something intelligent to say to you, we don't try and just spam you with advice that may or may not hit you. know, Like throwing, throwing mud pies at something and hope that something sticks. This is what it's about. It's about actually helping you. Now, I'm going to apologize now for the way I'm going to show you the next bit. In real life, what's going to happen is, when I want to get more information about my, uh, my historical poems, by the way, I can look at this week and last week and the week before, but if I want to dig in, I touch on it, and then I would want to take the phone round in order to do it. Unfortunately, I can't twist the screen and it's not clever enough to actually redo the image. But if you actually look at what's here, I just want to show you the point. If I want to choose the time period, I can compress so I see more weeks or I can go further out. Um, if I want to look at a specific parameter, I can choose it. Um, and then I get a different view. So the point is not so much what I'm literally showing you. Now here we're showing availability, the when the press was available in the light green, when it actually printed in the dark green. In other words, your press was able to print, you didn't have enough work. No surprise, it's the testing center. It's not a production site. But if I'm a PSP, I'm gonna look at this and say, I'm barely using my capacity. Does that mean I want to work fewer hours if I can't get more jobs in, or can I get more work to put on the press? But this is the kind of view, and the point is, who wants to do this? Who wants to do it on their cell phone, on their smartphone? It's people who are on the go. It's people who may not be in the shop. Managers who may be sitting in a different building to where the presses are located. If I sit here and the press is over there, I probably don't need it, but it's giving capabilities. So that is um, the mobile app. The mobile app, the native mobile app, is actually all about smartphones because we believe that when you start doing things on that small form factor screen, you need to work differently. I've also got an illegal Apple iPad. It's mine, it's not HP's. After all, we know all these things, but I have an iPad at home. I'm not going to apologize. But I just want to make the point that if I open my iPad here, what I actually get is I get, I can, I can actually be mobile. I can have my anytime, anywhere access on my iPad when I actually um, log in through a web browser because the form factor here is good. Now, of course, it's not going to do what I want it to do. Never mind, because you can't see it anyway. But the point is that you can, actually, you can actually work like that. And that's what we're thinking about. Now, as we said, um, PrintOS, especially PrintBee, which was the first app that we put into the market during the field tests, has been out there for a while. And what I'd like to do at this point is introduce Anat Kanel, who is the product manager who's been working with PrintBeat and the other press apps. And she's going to talk to us and some of our customers about their experience. Okay. No? Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anat Kanel Kalka, and I'm the product manager of HP PrintBeat. Uh, and all the other applications that will enable our customers to get the most out of their presses. I've been working for Indigo for the last 15 years, 10 of them in R&D and the rest in product marketing. We already have, as, ma as Simon mentioned, 130 connected Indigo presses around the world at more than 45 customer sites in Germany, UK, Spain, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, China, Japan, Israel, and, and more. Today, I'm very excited to introduce you some of my early adopter customers for their feedback and perspective on our solution. Let's start with Dave Menchi, Digital Operations Manager in, in GLS. GLS were one of the first customers to, to adopt a Primit. Hi, Dave. Could you please tell us about your experience with Primit? The experience has been great. Printbeat is a report that comes out weekly um, and even daily on the status of the press, how we're doing on consumables, how we're doing on restarts, how we're doing on jams, uh, how many impressions that we've printed in a given day. Um, and the operators love it because it, it gives us a little friendly competition between the operators. Because uh, if you're doing good, you get a nice green smiley face, and if you're not doing good, you get a little red sad face. So what does Printbeat mean to you? 
PrintBeat is a critical tool in our ongoing production monitoring. We're using the PrintBeat app to monitor our press's performance on a weekly and daily basis using both the mobile and the web app. Being able to use PrintOS to monitor our operations, we are making better decisions in order to make deadlines for our customer. PrintBeat is by far the best snapshot tool we've ever had. Thank you, Dave. Now let me introduce you Rachel Howe. Rachel is the owner of Shanghai Instant Net Print in China. Hi, Rachel. Could you please tell us about My your experience, experience with HP Print OS is very good. Um, I like it because of two things. One is convenience. It is very convenient for a user to use, which means it's very user friendly. And the second thing I like it is the ease of mind for business owners like us. Um, before it took us a long time or much time um, to figure out the reporting um, of our production and uh, um, right now it, you know it, it's done in seconds. What can you do today that you couldn't do before? Before I was very hesitant and reluctant on going on vacations or um, business trips for more than two weeks because I was afraid that things would go out of control while I was away. But right now I went on business trips or family vacations for more than 30 days, 60 days because I know that um, production is in control and I can um, access from my mobile phone every day. It's just like I were in the office. Do you consider PrintBit as a must-have? Definitely. I consider PrintOS as a must-have for all printers and print shops. Um, it will hugely increase your productivity and your efficiency. And as a business owner, you will find out how amazingly it changes your life and makes your life so much easier. Thank you, Rachel. Now, last but not least, let me introduce you Graham Perry, the Production Director at Broker UK. Hi Graham, how has PrintBeat, uh, what has PrintBeat done for your business? The new PrintBeat uh, and PrintOS uh, app has helped us improve our efficiency. It's helped engage us with our staff and given us specific metrics that we've used to improve our performance. How much did it improve your performance? In some cases we've improved our performance up to 40% from the metrics that we've been given. Are you using PrintBeat on a daily basis? We're using PrintBeat and PrintOS on a daily basis to help Im improve our efficiency across the business, both here and at our other site in Stansted. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Anat. Okay, so now we're going to start going through the other applications, and I'll go back to the question that the animator asked. Would you like to help your employees become more productive, better at what they do, and happier? And one of the key beliefs we have is that knowledge empowers people and it helps drive that improvement in performance and satisfaction. And we've got Knowledge Zone as one of the apps. Knowledge Zone includes a huge, rich database of documents, training modules, presentations, movies, whatever it may be, that helps customers, including what you see here, the step-by-steps, which are a little-known resource that actually were created by one of our solution architects in the United States to help customers deal step by step with the kinds of things that trip customers up on a daily basis. That being said, the primary use case is actually, I've got a question about something, whether it's a problem or an opportunity, and I want to search. And therefore, we have very simple and effective search. You start by filtering. So you say in this case, I've got an Indigo 7510,000 and I've got a question about a PIP. And you search and you get the results. The way I look at this, this is simply a way to enhance employees' skill and knowledge to drive performance. And you can look at this as a way of actually enhancing the partnership between man and machine because an Indigo Press with a, well, with a knowledgeable and empowered operator is going to do a lot better than an Indigo Press without it. And think back to the animation, that's what turns the operator into Superman. So that's another app. Moving on, we have the Media Locator. Media Locator has been around in Indigo for donkey's years, but we have totally revamped the tool, and it's actually across GSB tools, so there are media here for Latex and for Citex and for PWP and for uh, PageRide WordPress and for Indigo. Um, and the intention is to is easily locate the right media for your application or your customer's need in your country. 
and that in your country is part of the transformation we're driving. We've worked intensively with the media vendors to actually update the database, because it turns out that media that is called A in Italy can be called B in Germany and C in the UK. They're the same media. But if I search for the local name and it was only under the generic name that came out of the paper mill, I wouldn't find it. So we've now updated it to make it a much more accessible and useful database. The second thing we're doing is we're actually working with the media partners to create media fingerprints for all, as, as many as possible as the media in the database so that you're actually going to have valuable media profiles that you can download directly from the media locator to your press, saving effort and delivering better results. So that is kind of transformational for customers. And of course, same thing, you have to have a powerful search tool that enables you to define where you are and what you want and what equipment you're looking to print with and so on, and you can find the right media, including the star ratings which show you how they perform to help you make smart decisions. You can now, and I'm moving on to the next step, and then I'm going to put them together, Substrate Manager. And here the question I would ask customers is, would you like to achieve color, quality, and print performance consistency across your HP Indigo presses? The answer to that is Substrate Manager. Substrate Manager is a private zone compared to Media Locator as a public zone. In the private zone, I actually create a custom media profile for a particular kind of paper or substrate on this particular press. Once I have that media fingerprint, that whole media profile, I can now upload it from the press to Substrate Manager in the cloud, and then I can go to another press and download that from the cloud directly to the press. So if I've got more than one press, I can actually ensure consistency. Now, one of the things that we know is that operator mistakes in setting up media is a prime cause of print quality problems, paper jams, and so on. When I discovered that there are actually 58, 5, 8 different parameters in defining a media, I said, no wonder people make mistakes. So what we're trying to do here between the media locator and the substrate manager is to create a simplification that is going to drive quality and performance and consistency and help customers to succeed. And in the world of a growing number of multi-press and multi-site customers, that's really valuable and important. And the final app that I'm going to talk about here is actually uh, an app that is related to the DFE. And here I would say, if I were asking the rhetorical question with which I'm introducing each app, would you like to protect and share the resources that you've so painstakingly created in order to enable your business? And when I say resources, you can see here fonts and input methods and marks and profile, ICC profiles and looks and imposition templates and mark templates and so on. You can now have these things on your DFE and just like with the, uh, with the substrate manager where you, up, where you upload the, uh, the, the profiles to the cloud and they can share them with other presses, so you can upload these to the cloud and share them with other DFEs, but also you have them backed up because we all know it has happened that for whatever reason the DFE has had a serious crash and now all those resources are backed up on the cloud, giving customers both the consistency we were talking about earlier, but also the security of mind that things are backed up. So. To summarize this first pillar, what we've talked about is basically you've got five apps, Print Beat, Knowledge Zone, Media Locator, Substrate Manager, and Resource Manager. To add to that the fact that you simply have the ability to set up an account with that dashboard and so on, all of that is delivered to customers at no incremental cost as part of their service contract with HP or HP's uh, channel partners in order to, uh, to, to, in order to get all these benefits. And this is real, this is going to help customers be more successful with their equipment. Part one. Now, if we were talking until now about the assets that people bought from HP, we're now going to talk about the next part, which is the jobs that flow through the shop. And a little graphic here, where you show the green you know, motorway over the top of the maze of day-to-day -day production problems, is what we're trying to deliver to customers. So, the focus is managing and automating end-to-end -end production via reduction of costs and overheads, increasing throughput and reducing errors, and ultimately, as we said, to make it easier to handle more jobs with less effort and cost, 
basically allowing customers to free up energy to focus on growing their business rather than running their business. Here we have four apps and we're going to tell you about a little bit about all of them. I already announced Box and Siteflow in Dusseldorf and we're going to go deeper on those apps as well as briefly referring to Composer and Imposer. Um, note that Composer and Imposer were developed by HP and Box and Cypher were developed by a third party and they're a great proof point that in the future there can be many more production related apps running as part of PrintOS and the truth is our vision is that in the medium term by far the lion's share of apps available to customers under PrintOS won't be HP apps. We're looking to create this open platform. We're looking to encourage vendors in the industry to leverage PrintOS to access thousands of the best customers in graphic arts. And therefore, this isn't about what we can do. It's about what we can enable in terms of an ecosystem and an industry network. So we're going to start with Box. Um, and here, if I go back to the, uh, to the rhetorical questions, I would ask customers, would you like to simplify the process of receiving and processing customer files? And for some pain points, I would ask, has a customer's email ever sat in the inbox of a customer service rep who is out for the day and therefore it didn't get processed in time? Or how often have you downloaded the wrong file because of confusion and, and, and lack of attention to detail? All these are day-to-day -day problems and Box is here to change the reality of PSPs today to actually reduce the efforts, overheads, and errors associated with onboarding jobs to allow them to get started instantly with, with an application that's simple and intuitive to use. And to tell you more, because this screen tells you nothing, I'm well aware of that, I'm going to introduce you to Susie. But because software demos aren't always so great in real life, you're going to get a two-minute clip here with Susie showing Box to you by video. Today, I'm going to show you how PrintOS Box simplifies the way we receive files from clients, validate them, and send them directly to production. Let's start by observing your client side when sending an email. On the screen, you can see that the client is asking for two flyers to be printed. He writes a text message and attaches the PDF files and sends the email to the PSP's designated box address. Now let's observe the PSP site. Looking at the PSP's PrintOS inbox, you can see all the folders that were uploaded by your clients. Next, we open the two flyers folder and see the files. You can see that the two files pass pre-flight. You can read the instructions and easily reply from within box back to your client email. You can also get a better understanding of the file's properties. In addition, you can also preview the file. The third and last step is file routing. If the file passed validation step, you can now send it to a specific destination. It can be a production pro DFE, a RIP, a prepress department folder, or any other destination. For instance, if you choose the production pro option, you can select the right print settings and send the file directly to production you will be able to enjoy the same experience whether your client sends file via email attachment, we transfer, or Dropbox link, or files are flowing in via web to print. Additionally, we offer you Easy Submit Web Tool. It is a file upload service for your clients, which sends the files directly to PrintOS Box. Your client logs into Easy Submit web page. First, he needs to type in the project name and the focal point name in the PSP. <coughs> Second, the client presses the Add New Files button to upload files and complete a short form. This action can be repeated in order to upload multiple files at once. The process is completed once the client has clicked the Upload button. At the PSP side, you can now see the uploaded folders from Easy Submit here in your PrintOS inbox. It's as simple as that. I invite you all to use PrintOS Box app to streamline and accelerate the file receipt process and increase efficiency. Thank you, Susie. So that's Box. Simple, low-hanging fruit to solve a really universal or near-universal pain point. Next, Composer. 
And the rhetorical question here is, wouldn't you like to run a mosaic job without having to invest in expensive infrastructure? And you can with Composer. Composer is an app for variable data composition, including all the sophisticated capabilities of SmartStream Composer, including Mosaic, which is something you're all familiar with. So you saw it over and again yesterday. It's available for subscription on an as needed as, a, on, as needed on a monthly basis. So today, if you want to do composition of that kind, you have to buy an expensive server. You may not need it all the year round. Like this, you can switch it on when you want it, switch it off when you don't. This is an example of the capabilities that you're enabled by the cloud, but essentially this is giving advanced capability, making advanced capabilities available to every customer. And for imposition, the simple question is, wouldn't you like to centralize imposition to ensure consistency across your operations? And the simple answer is you can with Imposer. I don't have time to dig deeper right now on Composer, but it's just another capability that we're offering here under the uh, under the uh, the heading of um, of simplifying and automating production. Now we're going to talk about site flow, and here the question I would ask people starts with: Would you like your production manager to focus on delivering jobs rather than being busy scheduling and prioritizing them all the time? Wouldn't you like full automation from pre-press to delivery? Wouldn't you like to onboard new clients quickly and easily and provide them with visibility and tracking tools? All these things are built into SiteFlow. It's a tool that allows PSPs with, 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 with automated jobs flowing from B2C or B2B2C to C kind of customers to enable efficiency, scalability, and elasticity to allow on-time performance for thousands, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of jobs per day with demanding SLAs, with automation, of consolidation of split orders and so on and you can see that here these are pictures that are actually of a of an implementation at a real customer site as we said in uh, Dusseldorf on the 29th of February it comes from OneFlow and this is the new logo of OneFlow anyone who saw the previous logo looks at this and says hey what's gone wrong but they actually updated their logo in the last month um, OneFlow is a young customer young company in the UK with an impressive track record and what I'd like to do to talk more about how SiteFlow can help customers is introduce Muna. Um, Muna is the product manager for SiteFlow. And Muna is going to tell us about uh, what the SiteFlow and what it does for people. Thank you, Simon. Is it working? Yes, it is now. Thank you. Hello and good morning. My name is Muna Asi, and I'm the product marketing manager of PrintOS SiteFlow. I've been with Indigo just about three years. Uh, I came here from uh, holding a previous position at Presence, as well as at PageFlex, uh, working on marketing of web-to-print solutions. So PrintOS SiteFlow, powered by OneFlow systems, is really a proven solution. It's being used today by several Indigo customers across the globe, helping them optimize their production processes, but more importantly, better serve the growing market of online print ordering. And to uh, show you a little bit about that, I want to talk and focus on two customers that are using the system. So the first one will be IPS and then Shesso. IPS, this is a customer located on the Channel Island of Guernsey in the UK. They specialize in the greeting cards and postcards market. IPS actually developed a homegrown solution to help them manage the jobs across the production floor. They very quickly realized that the product was just not scalable. It didn't give them the elasticity needed. They found themselves investing in hardware, buying more and more servers to be used at peak times. So 90% of those were only being used 10% of the time. It was very difficult for them to onboard customers with the integration, a huge investment. So they decided to retire their product and go out looking for a new solution uh, for production management. They came across the OneFlow cloud. They deployed the solution in early December, just before the peak season. And thankfully, due to the ease of integration with the APIs that we offer, they were able to onboard a client and flow jobs directly into the production management system. IPS last year onboarded 12 brands. They produced and shipped 1.8 million greeting cards and postcards. 
they've seen 40% growth and they've confirmed that this would have not been possible had they not taken on OneFlow Cloud. This is a huge achievement. The second customer I want to talk about is Schetzel. They're located in Donauwörth, Germany, and I do apologize if I pronounce that wrong. They are a general commercial printer. They produce a variety of digital products from books to postcards, uh, calendars, you name it. Like IPS, Schetzel II decided to outsource the production or the uh, development of a production system. When they bought on their Indigo 10,000 press, in addition to their other Indigo fleet, they realized that they had this huge capacity, a lot of new applications that they could offer, but workflow was a real bottleneck. They were not utilizing the Indigo presses to the maximum. So they too went out to the DScoop community and started asking about production management solutions. They got introduced to OneFlow systems and to customers that are using the OneFlow cloud and very quickly they too deployed the solution. And when talking to Schetzel, for them beyond the great capabilities that uh, SiteFlow, CloudFlow uh, offers is their ability to collaborate with other PSPs to produce globally for a large US publisher. The publisher can flow jobs to these different production sites and have a single point of visibility to all the jobs across the production sites. They were able to pitch for other larger customers, something they could have not done if they were not working together in this printing network. Schetzel too, so growth in job volumes, they were producing 30,000 jobs and last year they grew to 230,000 jobs thanks to this solution. Okay, so here at Indigo I also carry another hat. I'm also the product marketing manager for a product called SmartStream Production Center. For those of you not familiar with SmartStream Production Center, it is an in-shop production management tool helping customers that want to manage high volumes of short-run jobs. And at Indigo, we believe that both Production Center and SiteFlow uh, work in parallel and that we need, they address different market needs and that we will want to continue and invest and develop both these solutions in parallel to make sure that all our customers have the solutions that they need. So I want to assure all customers that Production Center and SiteFlow will continue to be developed in parallel. Thank you. Thank you, Muna. So, if I sum up, one of the campaigns you saw yesterday was the Oreo packages that people go online and do some design and put some messages on and so on. And actually, there was Composer in there because they had uh, it was a, there was some um, image randomization with Mosaic, and there's all the variable data composition, and then you had to dispatch thousands of individual packets to individual <laughs> consumers. And when you take SiteFlow and Composer, which are integrated, what we're actually doing is we're making every PSP out there capable of doing that kind of advanced application. We're making it accessible, we're lowering barriers, and that's a classic example of how we're simplifying and automating production to allow customers to drive growth, and that's what it's about. So SiteFlow, after a three month free trial, is going to cost customers immediately on a production volume based pricing. The more you produce, the more you'll pay, but you can spread those costs over them. The other apps you've seen here will be without charge in the coming year. After that, they will be what I would call disruptively low uh, prices of subscription, but, but, but cost anybody will be able to use them. The final piece is, as we said, innovate, collaborate, and grow. If you dare to dream, you can create yourself again and again. To imagine is everything, to know is nothing at all. As Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited to all we know and understand, while imagination embraces the entire world. And when it comes to innovate, collaborate, and grow, I would say that the limit of people is the imagination. And we don't know where this is going to go necessarily, but we want it to go as broadly as possible. So I'll start with about the print as a platform. You can see here, 
all those different uh, icons related to apps and capabilities. It's a platform. It has integration points. You can connect to it. You can run on top of it. And Siteflow is a proof point of the fact that an application was developed in one environment is now running within, within Print OS. Yesterday I launched showed you these logos. I'm putting them up again to make the point. This isn't just theory. All these companies are integrated with Print OS. Different ways, different needs. You'll see a Duplo at, uh, at Drupal. You're getting job submission from most of the companies here. We've done the integration with Dropbox to their APIs. But the point is the APIs work. They're there. They're public. They don't cost, unlike certain other vendors in the industry whose APIs are only opened for a significant charge. And every time they update them, they want more money. That's not the way to do business. Um, beyond that, I would say that just as Schetzel talks about the fact that he was able to leverage Siteflow and the fact that one publisher can integrate with Siteflow and then flow jobs to multiple Siteflow users. Well, actually, they were one flow users then, but they're migrating to Siteflow. So we can look at PrintOS as an opportunity to drive PSP collaboration and networks so that you can have ad hoc and regular kinds of networks so that you can think about how you leverage geography. I need to deliver a job on the other side of the world. Let me share the job with a PSP there in order to produce it. Capabilities, my customer wants something. I can't do it. I ask you to do it for me. Or capacity, I'm full and I don't want to turn my customer away, so I outsource it. Those are the kinds of capabilities we want to enable. So as I start winding up now, the cloud. We know what the benefits of the cloud are. You don't have to worry about hardware, software, maintenance is always updated. And our proof point, something we enjoy. Last Wednesday, Thursday, we rolled to what we call FT5, the final field test version, before we release PrintOS. And unlike the whole procedures we have to go through when we're upgrading customers' equipment, we have to go in and upgrade software here, and I'm the marketing guy. I can just see you press a button and it goes to the cloud. I know, that the, uh, I know that the deployment team worked very hard to make it happen. But basically like that, overnight, all the customers in the world were running the latest version. And with, but when you take that and you take the disruptive cost of ownership model subscription rather than purchase, you see the value of the cloud. Secure. We run on AWS data centers. There's a brand promise in HP around security. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, open. Open publish APIs, as we said, without charge, partners, you've seen about it, HP and non-HP flowing jobs to HP and non-HP equipment. It's a whole mindset of openness that is built into PrintOS. An integrated experience that brings together hardware, software, and service to create a delightful experience for customers, and that is driven by a view that we can change the way that people collaborate within a company, between the PSP and their customers, between the PSP and HP and other vendors in the industry, it's a platform to drive an integrated collaborative experience. Now, one of the great opportunities of being here is that you don't just meet one or two people, you meet strength and depth. And therefore, uh, as a final session in this presentation, I'd like to uh, invite one of the people who's been deeply involved in making these things happen to join me up here. And so that's someone from R&D. Let me invite Noga Tal, who's a program manager in R&D, and who's basically been driving the work to get more out of the HP Indigo Press. Hello, Noga. Hello, everybody. I think it's really important that the audience hear some things from you, an engineer, rather than me, you know, the blah, blah marketing guy. Um, so let me start with this. We talk about cloud software, and yet I gave this whole pitch about upgrading press software. Can you explain a bit more? Yes, of course. All the press-related capabilities of PrintOS need to be enabled. It don't just happen. So the presses need to communicate with the cloud. They need to report data, they need to report status and information. They also need to accept data from the mm -hmm. cloud. Without the right software, all the things you described about Primbit, Media Locator, and Subset Management can't work. And when we want to enable additional new capabilities to the print OS, it will normally require further minor updates to the press software. Okay, I got that, thanks. The press software isn't the only local software, is it? No, it isn't, Simon. So, Box and Sideflow need small pieces of software that we call agents to be installed in the shop in order for us to uh, send jobs and files into production. They are very simple, 
and self-installing. Once installed, you don't have to think about them anymore. They're there in the background running. Okay, I got that. I have one more question for you. I know that people sit here and wonder, what about security? It's a really big deal. Can you, uh, can you tell us more about the security in PrintOS? Security is pretty complicated, so I won't go into all the details. Security includes data management, secure communication, passwords, encryption, authentication, and much more. HP has deep expertise in this area, and the PrintOS team has worked with HP security experts to make sure that PrintOS is secure. Okay, thank you. That's really important, and I appreciate it. Customers have got nothing to worry about. Thank you, Noah. You're right about that. Thank you. Okay, so we started off with, uh, with these scenes from the animation. Get more out of your equipment. Do more for less. Uh, find any job and where it is. Create a network, anytime, anywhere access. Scalability, making people better and happier. And I hope that we've shown you some of the ways that we can deliver this. This ultimately is what it's about. And as we said, it's real. You can't see them very well, I know they're kind of small, but these little blue marks represent the places where we have customer sites that are connected. There are, this is real, it's out there, there are people using it, and the truth is that as we think about it, um, there's more to come. PrintOS is ready to scale at Drupal, so we'll have a lot more users by Drupal, and Drupal is going to be open to the customers to sign up and start using subjects, as we said, to having the latest software in order to get the full benefit. But we will be ready to roll to what we call release one just before Drupal, so the latest and greatest with all the new capabilities are out there. PrintOS is this uh, solution which enables customers to get more from their press, to simplify and automate production, and to drive innovation, collaboration, and growth. It is exciting. It is, as we said, cross GSB, and all the production capabilities, box and site flow and so on, work at any time with all the GSB businesses. And therefore, it just leaves me to say that this is only the beginning of the journey. As we said, we've been working on it for three years, but we don't say we've completed it. We've got to a level of maturity that we're ready to go out, and we have a lot more in our pipeline. And no less importantly, we hope we're going to harness the creativity of the industry to bring in a lot more. So I know we're...